Folks, look at this beautiful blank. Look at this. You know how people say something is brilliant? Well, this here is literally brilliant. Not metaphorically speaking, it's just brilliant. But uh, this is what we are reviewing today. Graphite leader, Corto prototype. This is the exact model. This is a 2023 model. This is six foot four inches, two pieces, ultra light power, not super ultra light as my other rods, but ultra light power. And the last two letters say HS, which stands for hard solid tip. And these last two letters are the only reason I bought this rod. I don't want any part of any solid tip rod anymore but they promised a hard solid tip. So now they got me tickled. Uh, I mean, how hard are we talking about? Can it really feel like tubular? So fine, I bought it. Here's another look of the rod. Folks, I promise you, this is a beautiful rod. And as a matter of fact, it looks brilliant even on the water with normal daylight. It's just a very pretty rod. And by the way, let me tell you right away that if you do buy this rod, this is the reel that you're gonna need for the rod. This is the 2023 Shimano Vanquish 1000 size. There is no other reel on the market that will look as good with this rod. Not just look as good, feel as good. I mean, the, the balance, the relative size of the rotor and the spool comparative to the size of the guides and the size of the blank, everything just looks absolutely perfect for each other. Okay, let's go through the components as quickly as I can. If someone from Graphite Leader ever watches this video, this butt doesn't belong in this rod. First of all, it's ugly, the shape is ugly, and why is it made of EVA foam? The butts should not be made of EVA foam because EVA foam grabs clothes. This should be some kind of plastic, like the Abu Garcia rods, the Shimano rods, even the Diver rods. Just a very unfortunate choice of butt. Just put any piece of plastic here. Then we have this beautiful, brilliant blank that I already showed you, but it's all covered in labels. Now, I'm actually 100% certain that there is a reason for every one of these labels. This one is probably required by law and the others are required so you know you didn't buy a Chinese knockoff. I don't know if I mentioned, but this rod is handmade in Japan. They want to make sure that it's protected from knockoffs, but I don't know if, if there is a way to make these labels smaller or hide them somewhere, maybe inside this handle, whatever they can do about that, that would be welcome. And here is the handle. Now, this piece over here is not a part of the handle, although, my gosh, it kind of looks like it. The blank over here goes all the way to this bridge. So try to imagine that this doesn't exist. I will come back to this piece in a second. But if you look at the handle without this piece, aesthetically, it's very pretty. You can see the brilliant blank underneath. Even the knob here is brilliant. The knob is long enough to offer support for my thumb. I have very long fingers. If it's long enough for me, it should be long enough uh, for you. Aesthetically, it's very pretty, but in terms of comfort, it falls short of these new Shimano bridge handles. First of all, the overall length is a little bit insufficient. As you can see, there is just a piece missing here. I understand this, is, this bridge here is sold like as one piece, but you need to add a small little piece of something behind it. I don't care what cork, plastic, carbon, anything. You need a piece of this to kind of extend the bridge like at least one centimeter, centimeter and a half. 
But let me tell you, once I added the cork here to have support for the back of my palm, the way it is right now is really comfortable. I think it's actually, as you see it, more comfortable than the Presso Air AGS handle. Just because everything here is hard. I don't like EVA foam in handles anymore. Even cork doesn't belong in the highest end rods. Cork is fine for the $80 Daiwa Presso. Um, it looks beautiful, but the highest you know, end rods over 300, they have to be carbon or plastic or something with hard contact with the palm. It just inspires confidence, better sensitivity. It has to be something hard. No hook keeper, of course, because God forbid we add half a gram to the rod. But for the record, there is a mistake. This is the best hook keeper. Shimano got it. I thought this is their own hook keeper, but it's not. I saw it in another rod. Look, if you don't like it, flip it. It's out of the way. You can at the end of the day flip it, hook your lure and go home. This is right here the best hook keeper on the market because it's flickable. You can use it or not use it. Okay, here it is, handmade in Japan with a code number. While I'm here, let me show you the lure ratings, max 2 gram, max line 2.5 pounds. I'm gonna get back to this in a minute, but right now let me keep moving. Here are the guides of the rod. Wow, when my phone focuses, you can actually read Fuji stamped on the frame of the guides. These are the same guides that you will see on every Japanese rod, $300 and up. It is Daiwa and Shimano that make their own guides. Everybody else is stuck with buying these things from Fuji. It's been for years, I don't know how many, four, maybe five years since these guides came on the market and there has been just nothing else on the market to introduce any kind of variety. Now, don't get me wrong, these are elegant, beautiful guides, super light, and um, so this is titanium frame and torsite inserts inside, and the performance of these guides is incredible. Uh, it's just a little bit sad that all of these years, all of these brands, that's it, they are stuck with this. If you want to see anything different, you have to buy Daiwa or Shimano. There is nothing else. Now, this here is not the Corto. This is the Shimano Suare XR, the connection of the two pieces of the Shimano Suare XR. Look at how beautiful, absolutely perfect this connection is. First of all, the surface here that will have friction is machine treated somehow. It's super smooth and prepared for the connection. Second of all, the end of the blank here that goes on top of this is, is kind of wrapped a little bit with epoxy and this one too. Again, epoxy adds a little extra weight, but it's just additional safety that the wrapping of the carbon in this blank here is not going to come undone or something. It's just extra protection to hold. Look how thin it is. You, you add a little epoxy just to hold it, I don't know, some extra safety against coming undone or even snapping or cracking here, the epoxy will hold it together. It's not going to affect the action because it's so small. Now let's look at the corto. The surface here is not really, I mean, it looks like, look, you can still see the carbon weave. I think it's been just cut out of the blank. I don't understand, but it's not the same. I can still see the carbon blank on top of it. There is no epoxy wrapping on top. That would add weight maybe. But you can see how the carbon weaves here. I don't know, if you grab it with something, 
It shouldn't happen, but you don't have the extra protection that the epoxy provides, right? And the same with the blank here on this side. You don't have the extra epoxy. And when you look how thin this is, look, I mean, you can't tell, but the wall of this is extremely thin. You don't have the epoxy on the outside. And this surface here is just not as smooth it's not prepared to be assembled and disassembled a million times. You can tell, right? You cannot like the Shimano assemble and disassemble hundreds of times. It, it will create a wear here. And I don't know how strong this is. My advice to you is, I think the way it is, is just fine. They're saving the weight and it kind of looks perhaps super clean. But my advice is assemble this rod once and transport it as one piece and fish it as one piece and don't mess around with this connection all too much. Okay, on the left side here, you have the Shimano Suare XR. On the right side, you have the Corto. It's, everything looks kind of big and ugly here, but trust me, the guide on the right side, the Corto has inner diameter right around one millimeter. The same like the Abu Garcia Eradicator and most of these exotic JDM brands, they resort to these one millimeter micro guides. Now on the left side, you have Shimano, you also have Daiwa, and you also have Yamaga blanks. They stop at around two millimeter for the inner diameter. These guides are impossible to see even, this is one, it's not even one foot away. This is one foot away. These guides are just hard to see and it's even harder for fishing line to go through them. But as you go down, all of the guides on the Shimano are just a little bit larger than the guides on the Corto. Look at these guides here. The, the rods are aligned from the top. Look how much larger the Suare XR guide is. It has the orange color, so you can you can tell right away. Again, for me, as I've said in many other rod reviews, the size of the guides in Daiwa and Shimano is perfect. And making the guides even smaller than that is just unreasonable and hurts casting performance too much for very little to none, you know, improvement in the feel of the rod. One area where the Corto is better than the Shimano and I feel the Shimano is, in general can improve is the amount of epoxy used to secure the guides. The first guide is the Shimano guide. And look at this big bulge of epoxy. And the epoxy on the Corto is pretty thin. And actually if you go down the other guides, the difference is even stark i mean look at how much epoxy is used here on shimano that's a huge amount of epoxy and all of this look at how much epoxy is used here there is nothing good can you compare there is nothing good that come out uh, that can come out of all of this epoxy it's extra weight that hurts the feel of the rod it's extra rigidity that hurts the action of the rod I mean, look at this. You can achieve maximum safety for this guide even without that much epoxy. Now, here is something very interesting. Do you see this black blotch that the pen tip is pointing to? This is where, in the corto, the solid tip is glued to the rest of the tubular blank. This here is tubular blank. On this side, we have solid tip. Even the surface, you can tell, is different. Now, look at how much solid tip you get. You get 11 inches exactly of solid tip. Not even one foot of solid tip. Now, let's compare with the Suare XR. The Suare XR, I've laid them, the tips are aligned. Suare XR, blends in right around here. If I put the ruler, and I did, this is 16 inches. Now take this in consideration. The Corto is six foot four, and the Suare is only six feet. 
So it's the Corto that's the longer rod, and yet it has only 11 inches of solid tip. And the Suare XR is the shorter rod, but has 16 inches of solid tip. This will affect the action of the rod. I'm going to talk more about this in a second. The other thing that is interesting and kind of unfortunate and a little bit negative, this here is, I don't care who you are, this is poor workmanship. This does not look good, the way the solid tip is integrated into the blank. It is not smooth. This connection should have happened right here where the guide is and use a little bit more epoxy and that way it, it is seamless. Why is the connection happening after the guide so it's so obvious now? Look how in the Shimano the solid tip is integrated with the tubular blank. It's absolutely beautiful and seamless. It is seamless. Uh, everybody likes to talk about handmade, but okay, this is poorly handmade. And this is factory, but it's absolutely smooth. And this is how it should be done. Okay, now it's time to talk about the HS hard solid tip. I have to admit the solid tip of this rod is indeed harder than any other solid tips I've seen. It's definitely harder than the Shimano Suare XR. It's true that the Suare XR is a super ultralight power, but even then, even if you adjust for that, there is no doubt that the Corto has a harder solid tip than the other solid tip rods. As a result of that, I will admit the rod has better sensitivity than the Suare XR and the major craft that I had, the Abu Garcias that I had, it has better sensitivity than other solid tip rods. And I'm not talking about sensitivity in terms of the bite, but the overall feel of the rod. The entire feel of the rod comes from the tip. Everything comes from the tip. The, the way you feel the fight, the way you feel your connection with the jig when you just play the lure, you know, before you get the bite, the entire feel feels upgraded in this rod compared to other solid tip rods. Is it as good as a tubular tip? To tell you the truth, it probably is. It probably is. My only problem is that as good as the solid tip is, as hard as the solid tip is, the rest of the blank is harder yet. The rest of the blank is harder yet. So what you end up with as a result of this particular concoction at the end of the day is still an extra fast action that I despise. I despise extra fast action. Now on the website, it says that uh, this rod has a regular fast action and I personally take serious issue with that because I noted the regular fast action. I am fine with regular fast action rods. They're totally acceptable for me, but I despise extra fast and this rod has extra fast action. Had they noted on the website that the rod has extra fast action, I still wouldn't have bought it even with the HS letters here. So that is inaccurate and I take serious issue with that. The lure rating says max two grams. If you are talking about the solid tip, I would say that's about right. I cast a two and a half gram, just the jig head was two and a half gram. And then you have the Kitek. So I was casting three and four grams just fine, but I didn't cast with 100% power. I don't want you to go four gram and cast with 100% power and snap the solid tip from the junction that I showed you. So I would say lure rating of the solid tip is about two gram. 
but the rest of the blank, the rest of the blank has power and stiffness and elasticity and recovery that are more appropriate probably for five gram. And this is one of the reasons uh, why I hate extra fast action rods because you're dealing with two different products at the same time. But uh, I don't wanna go on this uh, tangent. I'm gonna make a separate video just on the topic of why I hate solid tip rods. Casting distance with this rod is a little peculiar, but not surprising if you know about the, the physical properties of the components. If you put micro guides on a rigid blank, that's what you're going to get. Now here in America, we do a lot of casting with not with less than 100% power, not exactly, you know, for maximum casting distance, but we know we pitch to a tree, we pitch in front of the grass line. Sometimes I do a lot of backhand lobbing. Maximum distance is not always what you need when we cast. For that kind of casting where you want to just lob next to a tree or pitch something, this is not a good rod for that because the, bl the blank will not bend, it will not load. And then the line will have difficulty going through these micro guides if you don't put enough power in it, in the cast. But once you start to put some power in the cast to compress the blank a little bit, this rod starts to produce some serious catapult effect. You know, I will admit that I had some serious prejudices against this rod. The blank is more rigid than my taste. I'm talking about the blank, not the solid tip on top. The guides, you know, are too small for my preferences. And then this whole extra fast action. I was just certain that this rod is going to be a pooper in the casting department. But right now, after fishing with it for about a month or so, I think, I honestly think, guys, that this rod, if we're talking about casting one and a half to two gram jig with two pound line, I think this rod will outcast any of my Presso Air AGS models. Maybe because it's longer, I don't know, this, this rod is a few inches longer than my Presso Air AGS rods. I don't know if the extra length helps. But my gosh, one and a half gram to two gram jig, if you whip it with this particular line that I have here, I mean, it just goes a long way, man. So definitely, as far as long distance casting is concerned, where you put some power in the cast, this rod is an excellent performer. All right. Now I want to tell you my problem with this rod. My problem with this rod is that it has a very rigid blank all the way to the top 11 inches that I showed you. It's very rigid and it has extra fast action. If you want to have fun with this rod, you need a minimum of 8 inch bluegill or 12 inch bass. Don't even mention catching crappie with this rod because I'm going to block you from my channel just for mentioning it. Catching crappie with this stiff blank would be absolutely disgusting. I'm actually not joking. The thresholds where you begin to bend this blank and you begin to have real fun with this rod is 8 inch bluegill and 12 inch bass. That's where it is. Anything less than that, and you're going to be fighting the fish only with those 11 inches that I showed you five minutes ago. Now, with that out of the way, it's only fair that we also mention the strengths of this rod, because make no mistake, this is an exceptional rod. First of all, this is an absolutely gorgeous looking rod. The only rod that I have seen that's more beautiful than this is the Suare XR. And I'm sure some of you will disagree with that as well. 
Just don't do it in the comments or I will delete them. Second of all, this rod is at the very edge of what is possible today in terms of sensitivity and sharpness of the tip. The only other rod that I have tried that compared to this rod in terms of extreme sensitivity and extreme sharpness of the tip is the Abu Garcia Barbatus. I have a review of that rod as well, if you're interested. But if I have to choose between these two rods, I would choose this rod over the Barbatus every single time. It's 100 times more beautiful. It's 100 times more comfortable. This handle, with or without the cork, is much more comfortable than the two nuts that are used in the Barbados to, to hold the reel. It's not even a handle there. It's just nuts to hold the reel. Also, I don't know where you live, but where I live, catching a 12 inch bass is actually not that big a deal. It's even possible to catch a bunch of them in the same day. As a matter of fact, I did. And let me tell you, fighting a two pound bass with this rod, with two pound line, especially if you can catch uh, the whole thing on video. This is a catch you're gonna remember for years. It's, it's not just a catch, it's like a whole experience. It's like paying money to watch a movie or paying money to get on a roller coaster or something. So is it worth spending $350 on this rod? I don't know, I gave you a lot of information. This is definitely not an everyday rod. Even if you're bass fishing, it's still not an everyday rod. It doesn't matter what kind of fishing you do, this is not an everyday rod. But if you're looking for a new toy and you want to test the absolute limits of sensitivity and sharpness, and spending this kind of money doesn't hurt your budget, then in this case, I definitely recommend this rod over the Abu Garcia Barbatus. I recommend it in 10 out of 10 times. I recommend it for everybody. This is just a much nicer rod to fish than the Abu Garcia Barbatus. And also, I just have a hunch that if you fish this rod for a year and you decide that you had enough fun with it and you want to sell it, I just have a hunch that you can sell this rod pretty easy and you're not going to lose very much money. But in any case, this is the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.